After they did the first 75 megawatts here at Babcock Ranch, well shortly thereafter, all of a sudden they started to announce other 75 megawatt projects throughout the state. And then it just started to take off in a big way. From 25 megawatts installed in 2010, today we actually have 1,500 megawatts of solar and we're installing on average 300 megawatts right now plus a year. We've announced 30 million panels by 2030 and um, I'll be disappointed if we actually don't do more. The need to transition from fossil sources to renewable sources couldn't be more urgent. The, the science on climate change is in. It's, it's called the greenhouse effect. It's similar to the way a greenhouse works. The sun is able to pass through glass. The CO2 is essentially like the glass. Once the sun hits the earth, it changes its wavelength as it's re-emitted. And that change in wavelength doesn't allow it to pass through the glass, nor does it allow it to pass back through the, the CO2. And so the heat remains trapped within the atmosphere. The goal is to keep the world's average temperature from going above two degrees beyond where it normally was before we started burning fossil fuels. That cannot be accomplished except by moving toward a system that allows to continue to provide energy, because that is an essential part of life but without the consequence and byproduct of more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Today in the U.S. I think we get eight or nine percent of our electricity comes from wind and solar and it's growing quite rapidly because the costs have been coming down in the last decade. So renewables always get a bad rap primarily because uh, the, the view is that renewables are not reliable in the sense that you are sub subject to the vagaries of nature. We get these big rainy days and people ask, well, how does, how does solar work when it rains? Solar still works when it rains. If, if we're standing here in the daylight, these solar panels are still working even if it is raining because you're still getting light penetrating from those clouds. It may go down to 10 or 20 percent of the capacity of the site. As it clears out, as the clouds clear out, that generation will come right back up. And we uh, monitor that from our operations center over on the other coast. And you should actually see, it's, it's kind of fun to watch sometimes. You'll see the cloud cover come up and the generation will drop down and the cloud cover will move out and it comes right back up. The screen in the middle actually shows you both PV solar and energy storage and how it's being used at this given moment. You can also see some plots down there which show the solar power generation at the bottom as a function of time. You see where it was at zero all through the night and how it's picking up now as the sun's coming out and the clouds are moving away. Florida Power and Light covers uh, roughly about half of the state, so just over 11 million people rely on us every single day. We have 18 solar plants today, roughly about three quarters of a million homes being powered by solar power for a portion of the day. Over the next 10 years, we've talked about adding about 30 million panels to the state. That corresponds to roughly about 100 plants that we will be looking to add. At the end of it all, about 40% of our total energy will be emissions free. Frankly, we've been driving a change since 2001 where we weaned ourselves off of oil. We have really almost no coal in our facilities anymore. The ones we did have, we tore down. We actually bought a coal plant recently. We bought the contract from the coal plant that we were getting electricity from so we could actually tear the plant down. So here in Florida Power and Light, we use natural gas, we use nuclear power, and we use a lot of solar energy, and now we're using batteries as well. It's possible to, to make a solar installation that's sort of a 24-7 system. Uh, it's not really practical without uh, typically some kind of fossil generator, natural gas. From a practical standpoint, what we see today for large batteries, they're usually about two to four hours of storage duration. When I come to Babcock Ranch, it's rare in life that you do something and you're not disappointed. When you work so hard for something and so many people tell you it will never happen. And I can't tell you how many people have told me that. Yeah, I think Babcock Ranch and entities like this are 
incredibly important because they'll serve as model systems to better inform how to do this at larger scale. We'd spent eight years, all that time, pushing and pushing and pushing. And then it started here at Babcock Ranch. And now it's just exploded all over the state of Florida. And we started that. You know, I'm sure it has its critics that would say it's not large enough. You know, we're only, only displacing a certain percentage of generation, but uh, you need innovators. Somebody has to do these things first. I go to a lot of conferences and you, you turn on the TV and you hear everybody talking about sustainability. What's frustrating is you just hear a lot of talk, but there are very few people who are actually doing it. We just stepped up and said, we're going to, instead of just talking about it, we're going to do it and prove that being environmentally responsible is not only great for the country, great for the planet, but it's economically viable.